corruption first acknowledging God. God is truly in the blessing business. Yes, he is. We thank God for another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. One more time. Amen. We sing the songs. Good to be in the number one more time. I thank God that he has allowed us to come out. I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming today to help celebrate my 10th pastoral anniversary. It's all God's doing. We thank God for that. He's an awesome God. Uh, we give him the praise. He sung the song earlier. We praise him just for who he is. And I, you know, I, you know, we like to give God praise. I like to give God praise. I like yes. to hear songs of praise to God. And I just want to yes. ask if my daughter would be so kind to come back up here and sing that song, God Has Always Stood By My Side. Amen. That's all. And then, then I'll give y'all a little word. Not much, but a little word today. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'm getting kind of hungry. Are you pulling it? Thank you, God. And the pulling. Amen. Amen. Uh, we sung this song earlier, but we'll sing it again. <laughs> Amen. God has always stood by my side.
us what we call the right hand of fellowship. Oh, yeah. That means we accept the doctrine that was presented to us. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So clean hands is God's word. When we accept God's word as it was given to us. Yeah. And a pure heart when we accept Christ in our heart. See, because we can't accept Christ without accepting his word. This is what David was right telling us. We have to have clean hands and a pure heart. That means that we proclaim that we accepted Jesus Christ. Yes. That means we accept the word. That's right. And what the word tells us, we must be obedient to if we want to get into heaven. Mm -hmm. If we don't want to get into heaven, we don't have to be obedient to the word. That's the beauty of grace. See, in this administration that we under called grace, God is not going to force his will on nobody. I'm sure pretty much everybody here came of their own accord. Nobody probably was forced to come to church. But I don't know when we was coming out, we was made to go to church. We was forced in that church every Sunday, all day long, sitting up in church. And when I said I get old enough, I'm not going. Because it was just too much church. Yes. Too much. But see, now it's just the opposite. Can't get enough church. No see, this, And then I think back what the word said. He said his word is not going to return void. Right. See, you, when you thank God that he drug you to church, your prayer drug you to church. That was the kind of drug problem we had back then. We got drugged to church. And then we started experimenting with other drugs because we got drugged to church. Then we want to try some other drug. Right? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you've been saved all your life. Right? But the Bible said he that had clean hands and a pure heart. This is a, this is a qualification to get into heaven. This is our manual. And we gotta follow it if we want to get in. This is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. God ain't gonna force on nobody. But look, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitful? He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Mm. Salvation is free. Yes. Let's turn to our scripture reading for today, which came from the Book of Revelation. We're going to the end of the Bible. Mm. It's almost over. When we read the Revelation, this thing, it's almost over. Yeah. Jesus Christ is soon to return. Yeah. In the Adventist realm. Yeah. In the Adventist realm. And to those that don't know what an Adventist is, an Adventist is someone who's waiting for Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm waiting for Jesus Christ. We got Seventh Day Adventists and we got First Day Adventists. First Day worship was they waiting on Christ too. That's all. Adventists is somebody waiting on Christ. I'm waiting on it. But in the Adventist realm and those that know the spirit of prophecy and that know where we're at in the scope of prophecy, we're between the six. And the seventh seal. Yes. This is where we're at. Mm -hmm. This is time. We don't know when the end is going to come. But those that know the spirit of prophecy know the signs yes. of the end time. Amen. Certain signs that's going to take place in the end time mm -hmm. before Jesus Christ comes back. Yes. One sign that we all see according to what the scripture says as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the son of man the homosexual revolution yes. is running rapid mm -hmm. that's one sign that Jesus Christ is getting fed up with us mm -hmm. he got fed up with Sodom and Gomorrah for the same thing and my Bible says he's the same God that's right. same God that destroyed them for the same reason yeah. he's looking at us now going to destroy those same people for the same reason he did that. God didn't make it nobody like that. They had to be influenced by the devil some kind of way. These are signs that we see. Jesus said it's going to be wars and rumors of wars. 
North Korea. They want to start a war with North Korea. Syria. This is just rulers of wars. That's what the Bible's saying. But then Jesus had the audacity to say, that's only the beginning of sorrow. Oh, yeah. Only the beginning. So that means who is going to be left standing when Jesus Christ comes? Yes. Man is on a self-destruct pattern that they're about to destroy their own self. God ain't gonna let that happen. That's his job. Before he let a nuclear war happen, he'll come back. They can't play God. It's only one God. He's gonna come back and vindicate his word. Let us look into the scripture. Let's go and let's get some word in us today, right? If it's in the word, it's worth being heard. Revelation 6. Look at verse 12. He said, I'll be hell when he had opened the sixth seal. There's only seven. Now he's opening the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Oh, yeah. With no prophecy in 1755. Somebody know the date? It was a great earthquake known as the Lisbon earthquake. November 1st? Somebody. I'm glad somebody remember this. Let me know my teaching ain't in vain. Okay. He said, look, it was a great earthquake. Okay, we are a little bit ahead of 1755. Was that right? Then he says, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. 1780. May. 19. 19. There you go. That's right. Come on. May 19. That has come and passed, right? Then he says, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely fig. Oh, yeah. November 13th. 1833. 1833. I think we passed that, right? Uh -huh. So, we can look at it and say, well, these things, they already happened, right? Right? We can believe it, right? Then he says, in the next verse, right now, we're between verse 13 and 14. The next thing John wrote, he says, and the heaven departed as the scroll when it's rolled together. Now, I haven't seen that yet. Anybody seen it? So this is where we're at. We're waiting for this to happen. And when that happened, when that scroll rolls, when the sky rolls back like a scroll, and those saints that are ready for Jesus Christ, it's only going to be saints who's ready. Right. Everybody else is going to be eating. Because right. Right? Right. when you come back, we're going to look and say, this is our God. We waited for him, and he shall save us. Yeah. That's what the scripture tells us. Mm -hmm. So we, we're right between the sixth and seventh seal right now. The heavens haven't departed. So that means we got time, right? Yeah. I mean, if you haven't accepted Christ, the day is not too late. Mm -hmm. There's room at the cross. That's what they say. There's room at the cross yes, for one more person. See, the thing, the beauty about this, you may leave here today. Think about what you heard. You can accept Jesus Christ anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about it. God is omnipresent. And you know, we get to, and we, we try to portray that message to people that you gotta go to church to get saved. That, that's not true. I didn't get saved in church. I got saved when I was in my house. After getting high all night, I got saved early in the morning. That means God was home at my house. But once you get saved, see, that's the thing. Once you get saved, you will want to go to church. You will want to fellowship with like-minded believers once you become saved. But you can get saved anywhere. But see, I didn't know at the time that the scripture says the grace of God which bring of salvation. Mm -hmm. has appeared to every man. So wherever you are, God can save you. That's right. right. He can save you. And time is running out. So it, it's either either or. There's no style of fence. The devil owns the fence. Yeah. So we want to be on the right side and have a ghost going to be on the left. Mm -hmm. But we look at what the Bible says. Let's just get some more word in this, right? 
He says, and the heaven departed as a scroll with his robes together, and every mountain and island will move out of their place. Yes. Do you remember what Jesus said? The earthquake, that's only the beginning of sorrow. They had an earthquake not too long ago over in China, right? Yes. Yes. More and more we're hearing about earthquakes. Time is running out as we know it. So yes. it's time for us to get ready, get right, and get right right now. Yes. Right? Look, and the kings of the earth, your status as a leader mm -hmm. in the world can't save you from Jesus. Mm -hmm. huh? You can build the underground bunker, guess what? Mm -hmm. When Jesus Christ cracked that sky, you can be a thousand feet underground, guess what? That light is still going to find you yeah, and destroy right. you yeah. even if you're 10,000 feet right. underground. Yeah. That bunker can't save you yeah. from my God. The, the, the kings of the earth, the great men, a lot of great men, you know, great in what they do. We look at all the, these evil men. They was great in their own sense. Hitler was great, he was a great evil man. Idi Amin was a great evil man. Why, why didn't you know about him? Because he was great, he was famous. These are, these are some of the great men. Look. And the rich man. Hmm, rich men too? Yeah, that's right. These guys had all this money. He was starving in the world. Then what kind of sense is that? Heaven ain't gonna be like, gonna be no homeless people in heaven. No, sir. Everybody gonna have a match. Yeah. 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 Gonna be no homeless. Hi. No more sorrow, no more death, Hi. no more pain. Mm -hmm. God is good, eh? Bro. Yeah. The chief captain, the mighty man, and every bond man, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. Oh, you can't hide from God. But this is what's going to happen. People are going to be trying to hide from God. Guess what? You know what I'm saying? You can run. God ain't nowhere yet. He know if your name is on the road. Because when the road is called up yonder, I'm gonna be there. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to work my way up to the top of the list. Yeah. You know, we, we, we people say, "Well, I just hope I just make it in." No, I want to be in the top notch. Yeah. I want to be one of the first ones to get in the gate. Mm -hmm. We should think like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm not. Some people already get up here, right? But I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, Lord, let me come in first. <laughs> I'm gonna come tell everybody I'm the winner. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he's a winner. Yeah. Oh, I want to be in first. I just hope I just make it and all. But you know, that's how it is though, because the Bible said that the righteous has to be saved. Righteous people who, 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 who think they're righteous. Yeah. Righteous people going in. But if the righteous scares to be said, what's going to happen to the ungodly and the sinner? Yeah. Ungodly people and sinners. They ain't gonna make it. They ain't gonna be left standing. When Jesus Christ comes back, we have to have enough light in us to make a connection with that light that he has. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we're going down. Is that right? Amen. Look at this now. This is what they said. They said to the mountains and rocks fall on us. They'd rather be destroyed by a rock than Jesus. <laughs> they said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us. I mean, you can't hide from Jesus. Hi, this is what the rich men, the mighty men, are going to be saying. Because that money can't buy them salvation. Can't buy us. It's free. Salvation is free. You don't, you don't have to pay for it. It's free. They said, hide us, look, from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. That's what Jesus is sitting on the throne right now. He's looking at it. And from the wrath of the Lamb. He's coming back. He's coming back uh, with a vengeance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's coming back to vindicate his word. That's all. Mm -hmm. he, he just want to vindicate his word. That's all. Because he made an opportunity for everybody to hear it. That's right. He makes an opportunity for every human being on this planet to be saved. That's yes, so what we do with it. 
But we deal with it when it's brought to us. Jesus said, I come and stand at the door and knock. Well, I get the key come and save you. Mm -hmm. He come and save you. Don't need no literal door. He's talking about the door of your heart. He will come to you and bring you salvation no matter where you're at. That's right. You can be in the bar. You can be in the crack house. Yeah. Shooting the guy out. You, you can be on a corner. You can be anywhere and get saved. Yeah. When the time of visitation comes and God says, I'm going to come by and I go on the door. Just let him in, man. Look at this. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Yes. Who can be able to stand when Jesus Christ comes back? Yes. Oh, Lord, God, have mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. I pray for mercy. Yes. Look at the book of Malachi. Third chapter. One, two, three. Look, behold, I will send my messenger. See how merciful God is, he's going to warn you. Yes. I'm warning you now. I'm a messenger. Mm. Right? But we read the word. We got to get word in us. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. John was the forerunner of Christ. He, he said he was just one crying in the wilderness. That's all. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Right? And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, the agreement that God made with his people. Notice I said his people. Oh, yes. Whoever well, accept him, that's his people. That's all. You can be classified as his people when you accept Christ Amen. as your Lord and Savior. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Yes. And who shall stand when he appear? Who says these are questions? These are questions that need an answer. Who shall stand? Who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. If you ain't clean, you won't burn. Amen. This is as simple as that. Come let us reason together. Mm -hmm. this, let us read, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this thing called salvation. This how God, he says, like, I'm willing to reason with you. I'm willing to, God said, I'm willing to come down to your level and talk to you where you at. Yes. See? You don't care, see, you don't care where you at. He'll come to you. Yes. Isn't that true? Yes, he will. And he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord and Offering in righteousness. Oh, yes. We got to go through the fire. We got to go through the fire, man. And come out like pure gold. Yeah. Sometimes we get a little hot, don't we? Yeah. Life gets a little hot, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Hey. But we thank God for Jesus, right? Amen. We thank God that He gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is an enabler. It will help us. It will help us to meet the requirements that Jesus gave us. We can't do this on our own. We, we, can't, we cannot do this on our own because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You can't even breathe without Jesus. He said, I give you life, breath, and all things. Jesus Christ does this. And he meant it to the Father, even to the sinner. He said, let it rain on the just as well as the unjust. That's what God said. So, that's mercy. Everybody in here got new mercies this morning. Yes. Did you thank God when you got up this morning? Did you thank him when you felt that thing of love touching? That alarm clock didn't woke you up. God woke you up. The alarm clock just was there to make some noise and let you know that you were still breathing by the mercies of God that he was about to give you when you opened up your eyes and you should have woke up giving God a praise. Not only because he woke you up, there's more than you should give him praise because he woke you up on the Sabbath day. The day that he set aside. He blessed, sanctified, and hallowed. This day is going to go on in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? 
ain't gonna be no Sunday keeping in heaven. Thank you. Everybody gonna worship on the same day. Just like it was in the first century church. Everybody worship on the same day. The Bible said it was with one accord. Everybody had the same purpose. And that was to be obedient to the word of God. Today we come up with different philosophies, vain philosophies. That's what the words say, right? And the rudiments of men, all of this is contaminated the church around. Let's look at Daniel. Go to Daniel 12. I ain't gonna be long, but I'm gonna be long as it takes to get the message across. All right. Gotta get some word in us. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. I get up here and tell you what I think, but I, I, I got a better chance of you understanding what God said. Look, Daniel 12. Look at that the end time. We're between the sixth and seventh seal. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Jesus Christ. Wow. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. Now when Jesus said, there's gonna be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in dire places. He said that's only the beginning of sorrow. Amen. But look at what Daniel wrote. He said, and there shall be a time of trouble. Hmm? No. Such as never was since there was a nation. Then we go back, you look at everything that happened in your lifetime and things you read about in history. <laughs> it ain't gonna compare to when this time comes. A time of trouble that never was that ever existed on this planet. A time of trouble. So when I read this, I say, well, Lord, do I want to be around when this time of trouble comes? Personally, I would say no, Lord, because I done seen some things. We done seen some things. Would you want to be around when this time of trouble comes? You see some things going, you saw Hitler try to annihilate a whole race. Jews, that guy. We spiritual Jews, but he was going after the natural Jews because he believed, see, in his warped mind, he thought that he had a pure race with them Germans. He thought that was a pure, so he gonna annihilate some people. Didn't work. But where did he get that concept from? That's a, a, a biblical principle that God established way back in the beginning. He wanted to establish a pure race, but then the children of God, they started in the mingle with the other nations, and it was, it's no longer a pure race. That's why the New Testament is whosoever will. All right. It's a spiritual thing now. Because the natural branches couldn't go with what Jesus had in mind. Listen, men try to do that. They get that from the Word. But he said it's going to be a time of trouble. Not since there was a nation, even to that time, and at that time, the people shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. Huh? You, see, you read that? Yeah. So when that time of trouble comes, if, if God see fit that you can endure it, you may not think you can, but God said, I got you. You won't go through this. You will. Well, because if you read what the Bible says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Mm -hmm. How do you get to, and you ask the question, you should, you should ask the question, well, how do I get my name written in the book? Right. Except Jesus Christ. Yes. That's all, that's all you got. Once you accept Jesus Christ, yes. your name is written in the book. Yes. Amen. What you do after you accept Christ is going to determine whether it stays in there or not. All right. See, you can get your name written in the book, but is it going to stay there? Yes. But see, are you confident in this one thing? If he become a good work in you, the Bible says he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So if Christ performs a good work in you, your name is going to be found written in the book. Yeah. 
That's up to you. Do you want it to stay there? If you don't want it to stay there, the choices that you make can determine whether your name is going to stay in the book. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that, right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. I want my name to stay in the book. Right? But look at this now. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So if your name went in the book, then if you sleep in Jesus, notice how it look it, it, it uses the words here, and many of them that sleep. Death, another word for death is sleep. Amen. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when you look in the word of God, if you ever paid any attention, talk about sleep. It's referring to the believers. When they talk about death, that's referring to the sinners. He said, Oh, also, the soul that sinned, it shall die. It didn't say it was going to sleep, but even the soul that sinned is going to be resurrected. It's going to be resurrected, but not in the first resurrection. That's right. The second resurrection, some people don't even know about a resurrection, right? Sadducees, they didn't even believe in a resurrection, right? Look, look at this now. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn me to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Some of them that turn, this is what it says now. And some to shame and never like, okay, wait a minute, no, no. They that turn many to righteousness. Be, being a witness for the Lord. See, this is all it is. Being a witness to the Lord. Have you turned somebody on to Jesus? Yes. Turn them on to Jesus. Think about how when you was out there, you would turn them somebody on to your little weed. Now you're turning them on to Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is good, amen. Look at all the time. Look at this now. Verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut the words and seal the book. Seal it. Now, listen. Seal the book even to the time of the end. Well, now it's time to open the book up. This is the end. When Daniel wrote this, it was not the end. This was before Christ first coming. He done came and went the first time. He came to save his people. Then he's coming back again to get his people. And the third time he's coming back with his people. Yes. Look at this now. He told him to seal the book. That man, and we study the history of the Christian, Christianity. And we wonder how come some of the reformers when they found out that the Catholic Church was not applying the scripture to their worship, they started branching off and coming up with different denominations. How come they didn't come up with the Sabbath truth also? Because it wasn't time for them. The book was sealed up. See? Certain things wasn't revealed to them in that time because the scripture was already written. They had to go by what the scripture had already wrote. It wasn't time for them to understand the Sabbath truth. But now it's time for you to understand the Sabbath truth because God is preparing a people for heaven. Amen. And when we get to heaven, we're going to worship on this same day. We're worshiping. So get to practice it now. Yes. Get to practice it now. Amen. The Bible says from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh is going to come and worship before we say the Lord. I'm practicing. But look at this now. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So, in the end time, when this book is open and when it's revealed, then we don't get the knowledge about it. But back then, during the reformer age, they didn't have the full knowledge of this. But once everything had taken place that was already written, then God gives us the knowledge of where we stand in the last days. Yes. Thank God for mercy. Look at verse 10, the same book. Look. 
Many shall be purified and made white and dry, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. So the Bible said the wicked, they're going to continue to do wicked. They ain't going to understand. They're going to think they're doing something right. They ain't going to understand because they're not going to understand. How do you understand what the Bible says unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you? Amen. How are you going to get the Holy Spirit unless you be obedient to the Word? Amen. That's right. Just don't work that way, do it. Yeah. Hold on. I got a couple more scriptures. I got to go in the Word. Look. It's almost over. It's almost over. Go to the book of Ephesians. We're going to read this. I got all my scriptures tomorrow. I'm turning quickly to them and start reading. Ephesians 6, verse 10. It's like Father, okay. Father, he can read in this. Father, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. This is the only way we're going to be able to stand with the power of Christ. Yes. Can't do it no other way. Jesus said, if you try to come some other way, you will be fit around. Yes. So we got to come through Jesus Christ to get to the Father if we want to make it into heaven. Right. And it's free. Yes. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wilds of the devil. Well, who's going to be left standing if you put the whole arm of God on? You'll be able to stand. So we thank God for the arm. Yes. We thank God for the arm. We thank God for his son Jesus. Yes. We thank God for grace and mercy. But look at what the Bible said. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. Who are you fighting against? But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. What is higher than us? Government. Then in the end time, when churches stay united, and they start trying to tell you when you can worship God. Uh -huh. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. When they try to enforce a uh, dead worship. These people don't even, they're not aware of what's going on. They start out, things just don't happen, or they start out so. Yes. We have a National Day of Prayer. Well, I really have a National Day of Prayer. Does anybody know that? What well, that's next month, isn't it? National Day of Prayer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's National Day where they say, well, we'll all get together. We'll put down our doctrinal differences. Mm -hmm. to, and come together and pray. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when I read one time in the scripture where Jeremiah wrote, pray not for these people. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anybody praying for me if their spirit ain't right with the Lord. Amen. That prayer ain't got a chance of their prayer getting through. Amen. If you write with the Lord, you can, we can come together and pray together. But if you believe in one thing and I believe in one thing, when you pray over there, I'm going to pray over here. We're not going to pray together because we don't believe the same thing. We may be praying to the same God, but we don't believe the same thing. You might believe in a secret rapture, but I believe what the Bible says. Behold, every eye is going to see him. That's what I believe. The scriptures say he's going to come and not keep silent. That's what I believe. You believe in a secret rapture, then I can't pray with you. That's right. But see how they are silly. They said, let's get together and pray together. I said, mm -hmm. They asked me to pray. I ain't got nothing to say. I'm praying to my God personally because I know the signs. I know the signs. And then many of the wicked, they're going to continue to do it. They're not going to understand. They're going to think they're doing something right. And they're not. And I look at what the word said. We don't, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's about the principle. How you, your life should be lived on principles. Amen. The principles that's in the word of God. Amen. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Yes. Principality. Amen. Against powers. Amen. Against the rulers of this world. We wrestle at the rulers of the world. Well, we have a president. <laughs> We have a president. Is he on God's side? Mm -hmm. Or 
you ask the question, is God on this side? See, he can be on God's side, but God's not on this side because he's not obeying the word of God. So we said, well, President Obama? That's his name, right? I wonder if he ever watched it. President Obama, what day he worship on? Sunday. Is he on God's side? Or is God on his side? Spiritual wickedness. So you go in the White House, you go in that little room, they have a direct line to the back. All right. Direct line. Call up the Pope, get some advice. Spiritual wickedness right. in high places, yeah. presidency. We know people that just don't pay no mind. Jesus said, watch and pray. Exactly. If, we, if we don't know what the signs of the time is, then we're going to be up the creek without a paddle. Right. We don't know what's going on. All we think we're going to accept what's going on because all the church folks say we're going to get together and we're going to unite. We're going to have a national day of worship. Oh, why well, really got a national day of prayer? Yeah. They're going to say, well, no, no, no. Then stuff started happening. Then they're going to blame you. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath keepers. Because mm -hmm. they think that you're the one causing the problem because you're living under the law. That's what they say. You're living under the law. So you do, but you just don't know it. The scripture tell you that. It said the law has to lean on a man as long as he lives. They don't know that. The wicked shall continue to wicked. And none of the wicked shall understand. But we got to put on this whole arm. Look. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God. All right. See, when you go out there, do you think when, when, they, when the Ravens, go, no, let, me, let me use my, when the Redskins go out to play a game, huh? and the man they come out there, RG3 come out there, he's not going to come out on the field without his helmet. Yes. Mm -hmm. He got to have his whole uniform on. So if you are in the arm, you in the battle too. But we're in the battle, right? The soldiers in the arm. Little, you got to have on all your equipment. You can't run it out on the battlefield without all your equipment on. Amen. Can't do it. Right. This what the Bible said. Put on the whole arm of God. Yes. Yeah. So you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Because it's coming. Yes. It's coming. People sleep. The Bible said, wake up. Wake up. When the day of your salvation is near. When you first believe, it's coming. They're going to have that law instituted. Oh, it's going to come. Those of you, some of y'all young folks may be around. Some of us old folks may be laid down in the sun. Sleep. But we know what's going to happen. So we got to put on this whole arm of God that we can be able to stand in evil day. Look what it says. And having done all, stand. Stand for what you believe in. Right. You, you have to stand that we, with the word of God. It's not to be compromised. God does not make no exception for me. You, 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 you. He don't make no exception for nobody. What he said in the word, it applies to you. The thing is, whether you do it or not, that's up to you. Yeah. God ain't no force to on you. He don't make no exception for nobody. He never did. He ain't made no exception for Lucifer. Lucifer was already in that, wasn't he? Yeah. But guess what? He got put out. Did the Lord make an exception for him? No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He didn't even spare his own son. Mm -hmm. Send him down here to die for me. Making that person, you gotta speak up for yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Stay there for him. You learn what's going about you with truth. But you gotta know the truth. Amen. If you don't know the truth, right? They say if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, right? right. Well, stand there for having your loins girded about you with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet. You gotta be standing on solid ground. You got you got to have a foundation that's built on Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the rock, the solid rock. Our uh, other foundation is seen the same. Right? We got to have our foundation built on Jesus Christ. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. We got to be prepared to stand on the gospel to tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus Christ, right? Above all, taking the helmet, taking, above all, taking the shield of faith. Where he shall be able to quench all the fiery thoughts of the wicked. Yes, yes. The shield, my faith. 
faithful, move mountains. That's what they say, right? And take the helmet of salvation, put something on your head, mm -hmm. and then put something in your head. Mm -hmm. And all I get in, get understanding. That's what the scripture said, right? Mm -hmm. Everything you get, understand. Make sure you understand what the words say, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, ask them out. If they don't know, ask them out. Mm -hmm. If they don't know, you can ask it to Franklin. So it's smooth. Mm -hmm. Ask one of them BCC members. Or on the path of righteousness level. That's Pastor Till, they can tell you. Pastor Murray, they can tell you about this great truth. Isn't that right? Amen. This, this is our job. Amen. This is our duty as a Christian in the last days to, oh, yeah. to, to build up an army yeah. Oh, yeah. that's willing to stand Amen. with one accord. Yeah. No compromise. No surrender and no retreat. Yeah. No, no retreat. Amen. They say, you know how church, they have a retreat. We ain't no retreat. We ain't giving up nothing. We ain't giving no ground for the devil, right? No, -uh, no surrender. I'm just I'm on with attack. Every piece of equipment that God gives us to put on is for a frontal assault. Nothing's in your back. That's why we gotta watch out for the backstabbers. All right. See? We got to go forward with what we know. Amen. Yes. That's what we got. It's, it's a frontal assault. Yeah. So if you turn around, that's why you retreat. Guess what? You leave your back open. Amen. He didn't say he's not. He said your back is going to be exposed because you're not going to turn around. He didn't put his hand in the plow and look back. Hey, fit for the gospel. He fit for the kingdom. So if everything is a frontal assault with God. We got to keep moving. Paul said, I press toward the prize of the high calling. Put those things behind him. Because right? he ain't looking back there. He put them behind him and press forward, right? Yes. For what's in front of him. Yes. We thank God for the truth. Thank you, Lord. God has been good thank to us. Look, in the close, and I want to touch on one more thing. First epistle. St. John. The first epistle of St. John, second chapter. What the word say now? What the word say? This is word, isn't it? Amen. I'm beginning to say, I'm beginning to understand. Because first thing he said, love not the world. Well, didn't God make the world? He said everything he made was very good. But they don't understand that. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Right? This is what the Bible says, right? Guess what? If any man love the world, the love of the Father, not him. We got to separate. We got to make a decision on who we love the most. Jesus Christ or the world. Jesus Christ can save us from the world. He can save us from ourselves. You know who our worst enemy is? Self. Ourself. We are our worst enemy. That's but, but God. See, that's the most powerful script words in scripture. But God. Yeah. He gives you a second chance. Yeah. A third chance. Yeah. A fourth chance. Yeah. A 56 chance. Yeah. A 299 chance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A 1356 chance. Yeah. That's God, right? That's God. Awesome God, isn't it? That's why I say love not the world. For all that is in the world, look, the lust of the flesh. Okay. It's all flesh, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, what you see, what you want, and the way you feel. Look, the pride of life. He feel proud. He thinks that this covers everything. Yeah. The lust of the eyes, what you see. Mm -hmm. You see everything. You want everything, isn't it right? Yeah. The lust of the flesh, what you desire mm -hmm. to put on your flesh, put in your flesh. My God, he tell you what to eat, what not to dress. Is that right? It's in the world. Yes. We got to get instructions on how to get into heaven, right? This is what these, these three play right here. The pride of life is when somebody tell you about the truth, and you reject it. I would say all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven of men. But when you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, the Bible says no forgiveness. Amen. But most, you and most people don't even know what it is. They don't know what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. That's the only sin that God will not forgive you of. 
Because when the word is presented to you over a period of time, that's between you and God, right? Amen. That period of time. Mm -hmm. But when the word is presented to you repeatedly yes. over and over and over again, then, and you constantly reject it over and over and over again, that's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing God won't forgive you of. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you rejected his word. Yes. He said, my people are destroyed for knowledge. Mm -hmm. They were destroyed for knowledge, for lack of knowledge. And because they reject knowledge, I'm going to reject them. That's what he said. So that's between the individual and God. The time there. We don't know. It could be 15, 20 years. Could be 38 years. God says that's mercy. See, that's mercy. We don't know how long. See, we don't know how long. God.